Welcome to the Indie Kid Lit Podcast. Join Marty Dumas and Elena Page on their quest to help children's and middle grade authors find the right audience and sell more books. Hi, and welcome to the Indie Kid Lit Podcast. I'm Marty Dumas. And I'm Elena Page, and today is our goal setting session. I feel like it's been like a few years since we've had one for some reason. I know because it was 2017 the last time that we had one, I think. So then that'll do it. (laughs) And a lot's happened since 2017, (laughs) for sure. For sure, for sure. So yeah, so today we're going, we're doing our workshop and goal setting that um, will come from like do a check up on our 2018 goals and how we're doing, but then also we'll get to talk about our lessons learned and what we pulled out and tried from, uh, I'm gonna, if I miss somebody, you're gonna fix it, right? <laughs> Brian, <laughs> from Brian Cohen and Darcy Patterson and Clark Chamberlain and Sharnay Gordon and uh, Pip Reed and Tracy Babbler, which is um, really Perfect. great like kind of newish, I'm excited, Um, collection of people, like things to really stretch us. So, but first we do um, the updates. And um, so what's going on with you, Elena? And how are those goals going? How are the goals going? Well, (laughs) it was funny because, you know, before we got on air, I was like, my goals? Where did I write my goals down? I'm like, did I put that somewhere? Did I write my goals down? I'm like just, 95% sure you wrote them down. <laughs> but in any case, it's not in front of me. So if it's not in front of me, guess what happens? You don't yeah. try to meet your goals. So that's, that's a good true. lesson. <laughs> that is a good lesson. They say what gets measured gets managed. What gets measured gets managed. So, um, exactly. So yeah, exactly. but then do you want to, because you've had a bunch of stuff happen in um, 2018, and we don't usually talk about our books or, well, I guess we end up talking about our books a little Sometimes. bit, but like about our about our work so are there things that you want to share quick update so um so the if you like listened from the very beginning remember those old first interviews where all i ever talked about was lolly meditating oh that's such like a past distant memory now because that's that series is finished but um it's been nice actually going back to it and marketing it knowing it's done like it has a whole different feel to marketing a complete product there's i think challenges and pluses either way you know on the one hand there might never be more that ever gets added to it but trying to keep it alive but on the other hand it's a complete product now so how i put it out to people um has shifted so that's been good i've been like doing a little bit of marketing on that um which has been keeping it you know into in steady growth um, meanwhile, I wrote my Taki and Tula Time Travelers series, um, which I only did five to begin with. And the last one, um, well, just came out a few days ago since of recording this. But people won't hear it, you know, when we're recording it um, in early or mid April. So that's got an interesting feel to it because I'm like, oh my gosh, it's done. And because one book came out a month, it feels like, like, what? Am I? Am I done? Which, yeah, but honestly, it has a really nice feeling to it because, again, I feel like it's done. I can now go out and market it in a whole different way than when I'm concentrating on writing the next book. So, like, that's a learning. I don't know if that means in in future I will try to, a bit like what um, Lindsay Barocca, you know, always says, you know, she often says, you know, finish writing the whole series, then put it out, like, I can really see the pluses of, of doing that to some extent. Um, but, yeah, so I've finished that. So there you go. I don't know if I'll write any more. Like I've, I'm at this moment where I'm like, will I write any more, like, picture stuff, like, or is that all I've got in me? I don't know. So that will be curious to see. But I've um, thrown myself into middle grade now um, as my new writing adventure. So the first book of a trilogy is due out on the 1st of May, which might be when this goes live roughly. Um, I'm excited. I'm terrified. 
and all the things that come with your essentially first novel, you know. So, um, but from what you know, if you were listening to all the episodes and you remember when we interviewed um, Scott King, and I'm like, but I don't know how to write a book, <laughs> and now I'm like, I can do this. It's it's awesome to you know your own for all of us our own development. You know, going from complete novice to I did it. If it's good, bad, whatever, doesn't matter. I've achieved it. Big tick, move along. So yeah, that's what's been happening. congratulations. And yeah, and everything you. is scary until you've done it a few times. So that's yeah, that's like that's very yeah. good. That's really yeah. cool. And congrats. I didn't I didn't realize that the last Tacky and Tula book had already come out. So yeah, I'm behind um, on those. Then I gotta gotta catch up. Yeah. So <laughs> if there's more, if there, you know, if I ever do more, we'll just really be dependent on on their, their popularity. Um, so far, not so, like, not hugely popular online, but it is kind of a new series, but I've had really much better success marketing them locally, whereas Lolly is the exact opposite. For some reason, like, locally, I'm scared to death of, like, putting her out there, um, whereas online it's, you know, it, it beginning to flourish. So it's it, it really reminds me that it's all about where you put your effort. It's a yeah. serenade. You know, it's and that there's so many places still left to put your effort. Um, so it's never marketing's never done. You know, it's like always just waiting to to be. That's me. What have you been up to? Yeah. So I have um, been working on a not quite YA fantasy series. It has exactly what you're not supposed to do which is like <laughs> 13 year old <laughs> protagonist like i think 13's like, okay like dark, yeah i think but it's, it's kind of a dark hole like it's I like thought 14 was a hole you know, 14's worse 14's yeah. worse but like i've you read know, a few books kind of, with 13 year olds i have i've read quite a few I, I i really like it like the <laughs> the fact that they're 13 has like a lot to do with not a, well it has a lot to do with the magic in the story and okay. and so then i'm like leaving it as is until i'm forced to not anyway um i um have been busy working on on that series and um uh so that's that's cool like that's that's a really different tone than any of the books that i have out so far so um, I'm excited. I mean, I'm still me, but like, <laughs> a, like a different tone than than some of the other ones that I have out so far. And then um, we have we went ahead and did um, like a professional review for uh, Jupiter Storm, which came out a few months ago. Nice. And um, when I tell you that, like. Uh, so like this was a Kirkus review and I guess they're, I didn't realize that they were notoriously hard. Like my, whatever it's the J Jupiter storm is kind of, kind of literary. It's like very old school fantasy. Like some, like, um, our friend Adam was like, it's like Anne of green Gables. I was like, that's awesome. And yet <laughs> I can see, um, where that's going to be like a pretty, um, niche market. But um, because of that, like my team and I thought that it was a good idea to like get some like, you know, kind of mm -hmm. a fish, like profesh things going with it for the review. So like if you've not been one of the suckers who have gotten a Kirkus review, then um, you will not know their process. So I will outline it here. Yeah. So um, you, uh, they send you the review via email, the text, the full text of the review via email, but they don't tell you whether or not the review is starred in the email. You have to then travel over to their website. Well, you then have to like approve it or not approve it. You can not approve it and not have your review appear on their website, which I think more people should probably take advantage of because mm -hmm. if you look through the reviews on their website, like some of them are pretty bad. And I'm like, wow. you, you said okay to this? Wow. All right. That scares the living daylights out right. of me. Yeah. Do you know? like, yeah. Where they're like, 
Where they're like, I mean, this part was mediocre at best. You're like, right. wow, okay, <laughs> all right. So, um, yeah, but uh, so, uh, but you know, okay. So you, you then you have to approve the re that the review can go up on their website because they will. I guess they will just like not put it anywhere. So, um, well, that's nice of them at least. I guess, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um. And then once you're, so you like approve it, then they like build a web page for it. And then like the web page goes up and then you can see whether or not it oh. is a starred review or not. So this is me, right? Like I get, so I didn't get the email that had the text, but the email that had the text of the, the thing was forwarded to me. So I'm like, hi, they're like, oh, we totally approved it, um, blah, blah. So like I, I read this review, it is, an amazing review like awesome. it's an amazing review it literally ends with a moving comma entertaining winner those wow. are so i read this and i'm like about to pee my pants because i'm like <laughs> holy crap kirk is gonna star this review <laughs> <laughs> I like I like go over to the website of like looking it up, find it. No star. There's no. Oh, star. Are you joking? I was like, are you kidding? I was like, this. I was are like, you joking? You to get a star. <laughs> now, oh. now I'm like on a quest to figure out what do you gotta do to get a star. Meanwhile, this series with the dragons is like the only one. Uh, this Jupiter Storm series is the only one that is probably of mine. Or I don't want to say ever because I like that. You know that like old timey kind of classic mm, feeling, it's like a feeling that I really like. But um, I don't like every story that I think of doesn't belong in that voice or that kind of okay. tone. So yeah. then, um, like that series does, but like many of the other ones don't. But like that's the kind of series that could get like a star review. <laughs> you know, it's Ugh. like fantasy but deep. You know, like out of whatever. Anyway, so um. Uh, I'm like, dude, like the next book in the series is a follow on. Like, it's not a standalone, really. So, like, th that one's not going to get starred. I'm like, ah, now I got to think of a new series so I can figure that out. I don't, I'm not actually changing That's the stuff. Crazy. But, like, when I read the review, I was like, there is no way this is not starred. This is right. going to be so amazing. And then it, it totally wasn't. Like, it definitely wow. wasn't. Wow. But so, it's um, definitely, um, so, so the, with Kirkus reviews, like, you have to pay for a review, right? Yeah, yeah, you do. And, and they yeah. only do paid ones. Or do they do yeah. some that aren't paid? So no, they w well, they will um uh like publishers can submit they, for for Indian small press people, they will you can only pay for a review. Okay. Um uh publishers can submit to not pay for a review, but their mm -hmm. reviews might not actually get like their right. books might not actually get reviewed. Um gotcha. so then Sometimes, like people who are um, trad pub also pay for the review. Um, it's not, you know, you don't always get a good one or even like a, an, mm -hmm. you know, okay one. Um, so then I guess that that's part of the thing. But like it, I don't know. We'll see. I'll I'll, I'll keep everybody posted on whether or not like it actually makes a difference. Um, they um, are putting the 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 book in some of their catalogs so then uh, right. there's some print materials that are going out so then i'll see if that makes any um any difference at all or you know if anything comes of it because we haven't done a huge push around jupiter storm so they were saying that they wanted to get it into the catalogs for the spring for when librarians are ordering and stuff. So if we have a huge surge from mm -hmm. librarians, mm -hmm. then we'll be able to it. say that that made a difference, right? And that that was a, a thing, even though not, like it is nice to be able to have it. So again, my little like team, right? So then I, like I have like a, um for festivals and stuff and, and writers conferences and things where you have to set up a table or like do a signing table or whatever. I have like, they made me like, a, um, you know, like a retractable sign, oh, cool. right? And it has like all these blurbs on it, like, and like the Kirkus blurb is on it, like at the, at the top. So I, I guess at the very least, like yeah. that looks legit. Like if you're in a library yeah. space and you've got like, a yeah, positive exactly. thing and it's like Kirkus the thing that would be even better than yeah. that would be school library journal probably to be able to have it have a yeah. a little but from 
school library journal, or I'm maybe like, ah, probably the school library journal is better than New York Times in a library space. Anyway, so is that, it? so that, oh, I don't know, I would, I would guess. Yeah. Because I feel like a lot of times, um, but honestly, like New York Times reviews sell books, even mm. if it's a bad review, like, mm. have you read th that? There's like, yeah. there's like data on that, right? That like, no matter what, if you get a review in the New York Times, then you're yeah. going to sell a ton of books. It doesn't even need to be a good review, right? Whereas I think in, in school library journal, if you've got a good review from them, then you are gonna, but you're also gonna get a ton of word of mouth and probably also some longevity for that um, uh, from the librarians because they they like it and and teachers. So um, so there is that bit, and then also we've um, done some adjustments to like. Uh, uh, our website and and my website in particular, which has mm -hmm. um, taken, um, I don't want to say a huge amount of time, but some time. And um, the the thing that is being the worst time suck right now is that I'm saying time suck. It's actually a ton of fun, but um, is the the not quite YA series, which unfortunately mm. I think is turning out to be epic fantasy. Oh wow. That so is a horrible, be horrible idea. It's all the wrong things. So the first book in it, it like has tops out at just over a hundred thousand words, which is um, wow. a lot for middle grade. Wow. But um, we're 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 trying to we're trying to trying to work it down a little bit. But I don't know how much down we're going to be able to work it um, because like all, also a lot of things happen in the the second book in that series. But <laughs> we'll see. Let's see what's going on with that. Anyway, it's been a lot of fun. But I originally thought when when we we're when I was first kicking around those ideas, I originally thought that they would end up being like little forty thousand word, you know, like 35, 40,000 word, you know, fun fast yeah. thing. But yeah. that is not how my brain works, apparently. So So with Jupiter good. Storm, going back to that for a minute, how many books will there be in that? In that, um, that's a that's three. Well, I've only written two of them, but it's plotted as three, three. Um, right. books. I just hear suddenly my children walking around when I thought they were sleeping, so there's that. Um, but um, uh, yeah, no, it's plotted as three, um, but I've oh. only written the first two. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Oh, that's exciting. You've got something new coming out, and uh, still, like, yeah, that Jupiter's doing so well. That's amazing about the review, despite the lack of star. I think the fact that they said all good things is like pretty big, like huge for them. <laughs> huge. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see if it makes a difference in terms of like actual reach and stuff, you know, because yeah. like that's really in the end the yeah. the the thing, you know. Um, yeah. well like I'll see like there we got um, the Jane Toussaint books into a lot of bookstores. We didn't do it, but like people did, right? Um, mm -hmm. So, but like that can't always be the plan. So then mm -hmm. does something like this end up legitimizing and making it easier to get these books into mm -hmm. um, bookstores and stuff? We'll see, you know, mm -hmm. like I'll, I'll let you know. I'll let yeah, you know if that, awesome. how that works out, so. Um, it's only useful if it's useful. All right. So and how have you been going in terms of any of your other goals? Is it you on track? Yeah. So yes. So we have have um the so I, I had five main goals from 2018. Um one of them like an increasing sales goal. One of them is um about like finishing three books in the calendar year mm -hmm. and um uh and i'll i'll i've already i finished the the first in the not quite ya i don't want to say the series name because it's mm -hmm. it's my working title for the series and mm -hmm. so it'll be all it'll be all wrong but um uh the uh the not quite ya kind of epic fantasy one the first one in that and and so then um uh i need to switch switch back to write the third one of the dragon books but that that stuff is all on track um and then um i did not have not done anything at all on my website with uh adding sections about the school visit mostly because it 
seemed like it was going to be super easy and like straightforward and just like, oh, I just need to say that I do it. But then I was like, wait, I need to make things that say which common core standards these visits cover. And I need to make like a full menu of sample topics, but like also, and then I'm like, do I just only write up the ones that I've done before? Like, do I, and then like, do I like do the materials that go with, like, do I need screenshots of like showing like that? Anyway, it just got way, it got out of hand and it, and it made it feel more like a big project and not like, an oh, just get this thing done. Like tech yeah. ticked it off, which made it, um, uh, made it get pushed down the list a little bit, but, um, we, but I have been um, so far this year, I've gone to a bunch of conferences, which has been really great, um, like uh, mostly as a speaker, but one as um, just, uh, I'm saying just a participant, but like that's uh, really great because then you can concentrate just on what it is that you're doing as a thing. And it has really helped me with my fifth goal, which is connecting to bookstore owners and librarians. And so like those things, like that has just been like made that super easy. So like I've actually already hit the, my goal was 10 for 2018 and I've already hit that because of those conferences. So if you're on the fence about spending the 150 bucks or 200 bucks or whatever it ends up being to go to whatever like the conferences that's close to you like if you have goals about connecting with people or about like at least seeing what it is that's between you like what's the obstacle between mm -hmm. your books and being in bookstores and libraries then i would highly suggest that you just go ahead and bite the bullet and and go to the conferences and talk talk to people it's it's totally what, worth the time what sort of conferences are you talking about like give me a, you know what i mean like where what conferences are the librarians and book stores right so the scbwi conferences mm -hmm. are filled with mm -hmm. librarians mm -hmm. and booksellers and mm -hmm. a lot of times they're wearing multiple hats so sometimes they're writers and a bookstore mm -hmm. owner <laughs> or their writers and school librarians. Do you know what a gold mine that is? <laughs> a writer and school librarian? That's like, that's, yeah, you want to talk to that lady. And so far for me, it's always been ladies who are like writers and school librarians. But I'm sure that, you know, the ones who have the popular podcasts are are all men. So, um, and how do you approach them? Somewhere. Like, are you, how do you approach them? Are you just like meeting them and telling them that you're the author of something or like what? Oh, I definitely never, ever say that I'm the author of anything at all. <laughs> For me, um, I, like, I find that pretentious when people lead with that. That's not, mm -hmm. I, that's me though. That's not like a general mm -hmm. rule. So like, um, I think um, my, two of my college roommates were from, are from LA and um have a lot of like went to high school with a lot of um children of of actors and directors and stuff like that and so I, for them like name dropping and like saying how you're positioned to be fancy in the world is like very normal. second nature and normal and the yeah. first thing that you say right <laughs> like it's yeah. the first thing so that people know how to classify you and for me it's like a very very awkward and off-putting and so um, I think that the only time that people found out that I had books um, is that my business cards, I have Moo, you know, Moo, that uh, oh, yeah. website that can, um, your business cards, they'll print any number of covers on your mm -hmm. business card. So you can mm -hmm. have like an infinite number of different, you know, designs on your, on your business cards. So um, I, my, my author business cards are my book covers on one side and my information on the other side, but each one is a different book yeah. cover or, you know, I have all the book covers as, as the thing. So then that, that's when we, ex when we get to the point of exchanging cards is usually when they realize that I'm an author and extra cool has been that, um, uh, like a good number of times now, the people have been like, oh my God, those are your books? It's like, yes, oh. those are my books, which is great. Like, that's a great feeling. Also, if you got to the point where you were genuinely exchanging cards with somebody, then, you know, you're already there. That's just like an extra thing. That's not like, um... so anyway, no, I definitely did not lead awesome. off with, um, I'm an author. I let off with, I'm a person who's curious about like libraries and how you pick things and how you decide what's good enough to go in and how you end up, yeah. you know, you know, 
Yeah. So, oh, all the, yeah. the actual questions that I had. Well <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> um, so yeah, so that, that has been, um, that's been um, super useful. And um, we have actually dramatically ramped down the number of ads that we have, particularly on Facebook, although we do still run, ha are still running them, but just not as many. Um, we have, um, or we had, we still have, but it's like not as useful anymore, a Facebook ad rep. And mm -hmm. now they've gotten like extra automated or at least ours. Maybe we're not, you know, in a high enough spending bracket to have the real people anymore. But at one point we had like a legit person who was like, you know, like talking mm -hmm. and, you know, hanging out or whatever. Now it's like, oh, clearly this person has a script that they're like required to follow yeah. for the next seven minutes, which is not nearly as useful. And they were not able to provide me with any useful information about how to get our cost per clicks back down into a reasonable range. So now we have sort of like a very low steady mm -hmm. um, spend going on Facebook mm -hmm. ads. But I'm like super happy to report that it has had almost no impact on our sales. Well, that's great. That's awesome. So it's you like know, it's taken a, a little bit of a life of its own. Hopefully, right? Yeah. Like, so hopefully that's what that means. And hopefully that doesn't mean that we never needed to spend money on Facebook ads <laughs> in the first place. No, no, I doubt that that's what it means. I mean, look. Let's not, I, think, I mean, it's the money spent, so. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, I think it, it gets, I think it's, you know, the old adage of, you know, if it's a great book, doing anything will make it get out there a little faster. And if it's, you know, a bad book, then, you know, doing Facebook ads or anything else will make it sink a little faster. So, you know, I think, would it have been a success anyway? Like, yeah, probably, because if there's an audience who's loving it, then there's an audience who's loving it. But reaching that audience, I, I don't know, my gut feeling is that Facebook really helped in those early days. And if for nothing else, it gave you the confidence, I think. Remember, you know, like in your interview where you were, and we're jumping around a bit, but where you were kind of like, we were like, I don't know, is this a good book? <laughs> you know, that moment that all, you know, authors have. Um, and I think that's like I went to watch this play the other day, which, you know, is like a big play that the Melbourne Theatre Company put on. And myself and my friend who's like she's really, she likes most things and I'm a bit more picky. So my perspective is probably not as good as hers. But we left and she's like, I didn't like that. And I'm like, wow, you didn't like that? And we had this whole conversation about how, you know, even Hollywood movies, if people are putting a big investment in and thinking that this is going to take off and it just sometimes doesn't, it's very hard to know, I think. Like, And I know authors give, we give it ourselves a hard time because we're like, it's good, isn't it good? And, and then it might not be, but it doesn't mean it's not good. It's just maybe there's no audience, you know, or it's for whatever reason it hasn't taken off. So it's it's hard to tell. My sense is that Facebook really helped you know that someone began really liking it, you know, and, yeah, yeah I, I don't think you wasted the money on my long yeah, way. I, of I don't think we're wasting the money either. I, yeah. I really don't think that we wasted no. the money either. But um, no. it is good. I mean, it it's like kind of where where – probably at some point we're wasting money on them, but like, where sure. is it? You know, like, I'm not, yeah. I'm not sure. So like, definitely we've been able to use that to get a lot of exposure for the books. Mm -hmm. So then even if you're not thinking about direct immediate sales, then yeah. like, you know, having people know about them, having, yeah. people, you know, like that kind of thing or whatever, that's, that's cool. But, um, and, and act like actually useful because people who, our librarians also have Facebook accounts. People who own bookstores also have Facebook right. accounts. All those, you know, people are also using Facebook. Um, yeah. And so then they see them too. So, um, yeah. uh, so there's, I'm, I'm sure it's not wasted, but the, you know, like now it's a little more like, I'm not exactly sure where the lines are, whereas before I could draw mm -hmm. some like really direct causal things. Now I'm, you know, mm -hmm. having to do more extrapolating. So there's that. All right. So, um, we should probably get into the yeah, let's go. lessons learned. So um, on episode 30, we got to chat with Brian Cohen, who is so much fun. And can I just say, like, we, um, so I usually listen back to our episodes while I'm doing something else, right? So, you know, commuting or driving or whatever, just like regular. It's like regular in my podcast queue so that I can hear us, right? Um, and um, 
I happened to be in the car with my children dropping them off at school when episode 30 came on and my daughter who had not been paying attention at all at all um she like sits up super straight and she says she pauses it and she says oh my god mom is that brian cohen <laughs> like <laughs> the brian cohen my 12 year old daughter <laughs> like the brian cohen is on your podcast <laughs> I was like, you are hilarious. She's like, oh my God, mom, he's totally famous. I was like, is he? <laughs> but he's awesome. I did not break her bond. I was like, yes, of course, Brian Cohen's totally famous. We totally love him. I love that. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, anyway, so I thought you were fine. That was funny. I, I also gorgeous. told that to Brian, who also thought it was funny. Um, I should note <laughs> that like we like live in New Orleans, and um, this is a place where like um celebrities come to hide out sometimes mm -hmm. because like new orleanians are notoriously unaffected by celebrity so mm -hmm. like um we have like run into numerous um like hollywood actors like in walgreens and like had my child be like meh, meh it's whatever <laughs> like you know whatever but brian cohen dude 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 oh my gosh is that the brian cohen oh that's hysterical <laughs> I was like, yes. Yeah. It was very exciting talking to him. Really exciting. And um, yeah, so so I think like you you already sort of correct me if I'm wrong, but you're pretty pretty good at writing blurbs and you've been following his formula I'm already. I'm pretty terrible at writing blurbs, but I <laughs> am pretty good at following his formula or kind of a combination thereof. So like I use we use the beginning um of his fiction formula, but then the like mm -hmm. closing parts of his non- fiction formula um for our book blurbs what about yeah. you um so i'm complete novice in terms of well particularly in terms of a uh, um of novel i'm trying to think how did i get do my other ones i think i hired someone to do my other ones so i really don't know like anything about doing the blurb it, i'm one of those authors that it scares the living daylights out of me um and I did get him to do my blurb for my first middle grade novel um, prior to the interview. Um, and then I got really like kind of um, self, like really worried because I, I put it up thinking, well, when I first read it, I thought, damn, it's good. And I put it up and a few people wrote negative comments. So I was like, no, 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 Brian Cohen wrote it. <laughs> Not, I didn't tell them that. But what it, what really came out of it, for me it was um the parts that people thought were bad of brian's because he actually wrote it um were actually where my story sucked does that uh -huh. make sense right yeah so but then was, you're like <laughs> not at all not at all because um i think you know it's all about making your story better like i'm not going to obsess forever so once i've moved on from the story you know i it'll take a bit to go back to it um but i'm i was still in it so i got him to write the blurb before like it wasn't finished and ready to go out if it had happened at that stage i might have done that <laughs> but it was um i was still in the developmental stage right so i i finished it sent it to the developmental editor and sent it to brian cohen and thinking well it's not going to change because my book's awesome like it's the best book ever you know how you do that when you write your first book and then um he wrote a blurb which matched very much matched but what i noticed was that first kind of exciting paragraph was as exciting as it could get because that's what my story was and and so having that process of people critiquing the blurb really helped me realize like something a little bit more exciting has to happen there other than you know he sees a line of magicians and goes and lines up you know <laughs> <laughs> which you know is like because once he got in there it got exciting but you know his grandpa's gone missing which he finds out once he's in there but it was like mate make the grandpa go missing first like hello and then it like took on a whole different life so yeah. um yeah. yeah so i mean i well, think the, that's the, the one that's coming out like in a few weeks right yeah exactly yeah so i mean it still might suck but at least it has a good beginning <laughs> That's what I'm thinking now. And the, the beginning has gone out to um, the first four chapters. I used it as a, because um, I don't have a middle grade list and I wanted to keep it a little bit separate from my other list because there might be, you know, different audience, different, like some parents have both. 
Um, I use the first four chapters as, you know, sign up and get the first four chapters. And I thought nobody would sign up because who wants four chapters? Um, and so far, like, I've got 250-something people in, That's like, two on. weeks. Freebie or where is this? Some of it from Insta Freebie and some of it just from sharing it on social media. But I'm astounded. Like, now that doesn't mean anything, you know, like, of course, that doesn't mean anything. But people have written to me and actually said, love the first four chapters. Go oh, read the wonderful. rest. Oh, Right. That's, so that's something. And I think that's because of Brian Cohen's original blurb which led me on that journey. So, like, I don't know, the rest of the book, I honestly feel this, I'm not just saying it, the rest of the book could completely suck because it's really hard to write a complete book. But I know the opening bit is fabulous, thanks to Brian Cohen. That's right. <laughs> so that's, right, right. So that's um, Well, should we, so Darcy technically is next in the list, but Clark Chamberlain kind of goes with the, the topic. Yeah. Should we jump true, to true. Clark and then back up to Darcy? Let's do that. Yeah. Okay. So, um, in terms of developmental editing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it sounds like you've got a bit of developmental editing almost from um from the, your experience with the blurb with uh, Brian Cohen, but um Clark uh like was talking to us about a bunch of things like um like um using dictation to like help mm -hmm. quiet the voice, like the whole coach mentality thing. Mm -hmm. Um, reading your things with an eye for the genre. Like he had a lot of like real jewels. Were there like takeaways that you had from Clark that you've been able to use? Um, I loved, you know, when he talked about, you know, some of the stories we tell ourselves because I was so in the throes of that when we, you know, talked to him. Um, I, I think we in many ways synchronistically draw the people we interview, don't we, when we need them, of course, because they're all about us. Um, and, you know, probably likewise when people listen to them, you know, they, they must need it too. So um, that really helped because and also getting the, the routine of writing. He talked a bit about, you know, committing to it. Um, so that helped me personally. In terms of the, the developmental stuff, I did buy his Harry Potter course. So, um, and I found that, you know, infinitely useful because, you know, to know how story is put together, like, um, is always going to be, like, something that I think we're working to. Well, like, we might know story, but it's always evolving. Um, so that, that's been amazing. In terms of working with a developmental editor, what I got from him was some of that stuff of make sure you're on the same page. Um, I, I did use my developmental editor at the time. I will still work with her, but I, I actually since that interview I had a chat to her and we've decided she's kind of going to developmental edit like as she line edits because she says you've nailed structure. And I'm like, have I? Kind of, really? Um so, yeah, I made a few adjustments after listening to his interview, which has been really useful for me. How about you? You already had it nailed in. Yeah. You already had it down pat. <laughs> no, right? it's just that I had already um, – so I met Clark in 2016 maybe at the Smarter Artist Summit. Mm -hmm. um, like got to talk with him a lot there and also then immediately bought his Harry Potter course afterwards. So I had just already seen it a long time ago. So cool. that's not that's not exactly it. But yeah, no, I um for me I think um the reminders about like the like coach mentality is is a big deal. Um mm -hmm. and uh like the idea of needing to be able to like switch hats and turn off your editor self-talk which is honestly yeah. the reason why it has taken because i mean even at epic length the um uh the epic fantasy not quite ya <laughs> series title that i i won't disclose <laughs> um, uh it would not have taken this long mm -hmm. except that i keep saying to my, or I kept saying and, and have now stopped saying to myself, like, ugh, this is meant to be less than half of as long as you're making it, like as right. you're going as I was going along, which is not like that's not how you do. Like even even if you are 
good at that, which I am good at that for other people's writing. Like you can't always be reflecting that on your own self and, and it'll put the wrong kind of voice into your head that mm -hmm. will just slow your progress or make you not produce at all, you know? So um, where you're like, I can't, it, it might not be perfect. So then I can never do anything. That's that, that doesn't work either. So that's cool. I, pr I really appreciated that from that. So, um, uh, Darcy gave us, I'm sorry, do we have more from Clark? Things no, I, that think we're that's carrying I do think that like people should, if they haven't already, um, take it. He keeps even at full prices, Clark's Harry Potter course is very reasonable. So if you're mm -hmm. looking to like get into, it's not only for middle grade novels, it's like meant to be novel structure, but since it's analyzing mm -hmm. Harry Potter, it kind of is like middle grade structure, but like he like talks more things about it, but you'll get a really good um, uh, look into, like you'll, you'll have a good leg up if you've never written um, a, a middle grade story before, or, or even if you have. And also if you, um, there's a, a, a Facebook community that, um, that kind of goes with it too. Um, I th yeah, there's a Facebook community that goes with it too. So then there's more voices in that. So, um, cool. yeah, cool. Um, so Darcy schooled us on how to um, reduce the sizes of eBooks to be able to reduce sales. And I think I saw that you did it and did not have great results, but I did it and had amazing results. What did you? Did you? Right, right, yeah. right. Well, um, and I think that's because yours is fixed layout, yeah? Yeah, no, mine is reflowable, which was the problem. Like in fixed layout, I could get it small, small enough already. Uh -huh. um, uh, but you don't but use I have a ton of, there's a ton of words in the images. Uh, okay. So in the fixed layout, it doesn't work because okay. on a phone, you wouldn't be able to read the, you know, you wouldn't be able to read the, the text in the, the images. So, um, so yeah, no, but, um, I reduced image sizes and we were able to, well, for, for one of them we're like, ah, like it's, it's still free. We're going to take right. it off free, but it, we're, it's still free, yeah. but we're like, when it comes off free, we're gonna put it, um, uh, to the, the 30%, you keep the thing. Cause it's, okay. it's too many things, but for the other ones, it was pretty useful. Like we ended up, um, uh, saving, uh, 22 cents in delivery fees about on each, on each one. And that, that really That's adds huge. up. We don't sell a ton of eBooks, but like, you know, like still... 22 cents over like 300 copies a month. We're not, we're not selling very many eBooks. Um, uh, like it's still, it adds up over time. So I thought yeah. that that was, um, that was useful. And if we're ever going to like ride the, you know, if we ever like ride the yeah. crescendo and chapter books, <laughs> chapter book, <laughs> eBooks, just like take off like hotcakes. We are ready. <laughs> <laughs> but that's you know, a really good result. Benefits. Just, um, from those yeah. tips. I mean, they were golden tips. Yeah. They? Like that. Um, the only reason it didn't make a difference for me was um, because I use vellum, so um, which is good to know that. And but it, it depends on your book. Like that wouldn't work for like a picture book, you know, where you want to have those, you know, the writing on that picture and to look amazing. It does work for my books. So it, you know, and I, what I did was I took them all off. I did everything she said, and I put them all back in, really reduced size. Um, and I think it shaved off like one or two cents, which could still be a thing, you know, like, um, but, uh, you know, it sort of made me go, nah, it's not so that worth our it. Our reflowables are formatted through vellum too, but we got like a much really? better, mm -hmm. maybe it's just because it's more images. So, um, maybe, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Good to know. So that's, the, um, that's so interesting. Yeah. Mm. So there end up being um, 72 actual images plus like okay. things and doodads and stuff like that um, right. in the the chapter books plus the text and you know all that stuff or whatever and that and and not counting the like back matter images and stuff all the you know the next book in the series and all that all that jazz mm -hmm. so maybe it's just that it was how many images were in your are in your picture books. 
I was just about to say, I think there's about, you know, like 12 to 15 images. And if it yeah. saved one or two cents, that's probably about right. That's probably yeah. about right. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Well, that's so it's like a multiplier effect. All right. Okay. Cool Good. beans. Mystery solved. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering about that. <laughs> All right. Very cool. So then we got to um, chat with Sharnae Gordon, who um, is over at Here We Read, which is, I just think that's the most adorable name ever, but um, they are over on um, Instagram. She also has a blog, um, but uh, Instagram is her her biggest shtick for us anyway, were there things that you got from Sharnay that you um, uh, were able to implement? Yeah, like, um, uh, first of all, it, it helped me increase my Instagram usage. I can honestly say since doing that interview that I've almost like shifted from Facebook to Instagram, <laughs> which is, um, and I don't mean that I'm not on Facebook anymore because I am. But, like, I'm really enjoying being on Instagram. Um, and uh, also for me, you know, like when she told us about how what she expected to see from authors, you know, like really helped me to kind of because I have a tendency of just like just being a person. Now, a person is great and I'm still just a person on all my social media things. But it also allowed me to share more about my books where I normally wouldn't at all on Instagram. So, you know, on Instagram, I'll just be like, a tree, like, this is what my dog's doing. This is what I'm eating now, like, because it's photos, right? But I, I have since been, you know, putting up like, hey, here's my, you know, like, the, the, this is one of my books. Because I don't think people necessarily realise, <laughs> like, they may not realise. So, um so that's really helped and also the hashtags for me like changed my life so instantly my followers started going up i'm having great interactions i didn't even know honestly like that's before that interview i did not even know that there were books on instagram were a thing and there was a whole community on there so you know following like other um actual instagrammers and like taking their book reviews and being like, wow, that's a good book I can read and just, oh, my God, like her interview just um, was amazing. For me, it's just changed my life in the last few weeks alone. Yeah. So my encounters with um, Charnay also, like, made me start using Instagram. I can't say that I, like, am amazing at it or anything like that. I do not have the flat lay skills. Like, I... I need somebody to like, <laughs> like either I need to hire somebody to do the flat lays, which I think defeats the purpose, or I need someone to like legitimately sit down and teach me how to do them because like it is such a visual medium. Like some people have like a toy and like a, a flower petal and like the book and it just like looks amazing. So then I'm like, oh, I get it. You like put a thing with the book and like lay it flat on a thing and I do it and it looks like what? Like <laughs> what are you doing is what it looks like when I do it. So, um, I, you know, I, I haven't figured that out, but it has yeah. been extra. Like it's been very useful for me to be able to share bookstagrammers who've like posted about my books that's mm -hmm. been super mm -hmm. and i i um downloaded i will share hold on i'm gonna open it up on my phone i downloaded an ancillary app to be able to call to repost it um which is like just let's see it's next to the instagram one of course you can't really see it but um called repost it, it. Oh, that reposted. lets you repost because Instagram doesn't have native reposting. Thing. No, it's so annoying. Yeah. So, um, uh, mm. repost it will let you repost things and it credits the person who posted it originally and puts cool. their username kind of like in a little, um, footnote on the that. picture or whatever. Yeah. So then that. Right. that has been very useful for me to be able to reshare content, which as um, both Charnay and um, Tracy um, Babbler, who we also talked to, we can yeah. put Tracy together in there too. Actually, yeah. we had a whole social media, like little thing we happening do. right there. Right. Um, uh, like not exactly planned either, which I don't know if that's yeah. a good thing on our part or not, but, um, but it works out. Look at that. Um, 
uh, that I learned from both of them, like um, that obviously people like to have their work appreciated. So like mm -hmm. this flat lay thing is not a thing that I'm good at. So, uh, but it also gives me like an appreciation that it doesn't just happen by accident. Like these people have some skill. So then when I repost people's flat lays, inevitably they like every single time they have either direct messaged me and thanked me for reposting th their thing, or they've thanked me in the comments for reposting their thing. And, and it's also like really cool to like have like a parent be like, my kid flipped his lid that you reposted his thing. I'm like, seriously? That's All right, nice. <laughs> cool, that's awesome. But anyway, that like has been very useful. And I agree, like I feel like Instagram feels a lot calmer to me. Mm -hmm. It feels a lot more purposeful. Like I don't mm -hmm. mind spending a few minutes there, like, you know, seeing what's going on. And um, also like the people that I've followed tend to be um, either parents with kids that are, have like, you know, said something or done something about my books or, um, or else like parent parents who are blogging about books with their kids and, and, and those are things that I'm interested in too. So then I think that that like has helped a lot. Do I have like a gajillion followers? No. Do I get some new people every day? Yep. Um, we'll see. But I think that the value um, is more in being there mm -hmm. to be able to be referenced in the conversation than necessarily leading the conversation for me right now, because I feel like the moms are leading the conversations <laughs> um and like i'm and, and they're doing a good job like they were doing it without me so like i don't know that i need to step in and be the um be the leader of the of it just yet you know well so how do you know if somebody like posts something about one of your books like is okay there a let's do this yeah. so um if you open up your instagram app we're all like walking this tutorial at the same time <laughs> So if you open up your Instagram app, my phone is all busted up. Um, I dropped it on the sidewalk today. Oh no. I know it's oh, so happy. No. Oh, wait, you kind of can't see it as much. I can see it. It looks okay, awful. good. Yeah, it's what so is? sad. It's very sad. Okay, so then you go, there's a little um there's a little uh magnifying glass looking thing. Mm-hmm. And so you click that, the search. Which the search, is, yes, the magnifying glass. So, then, mm -hmm. so you can, I, I would probably search for hashtags because if you if somebody mentioned you by name, like by your username, then just like on Facebook, you would have gotten a little notification about that. So uh -huh. you already know that. But it's very possible that people have been looking up things, um, have been writing things about you without you knowing. So look up, I would first look up the title of one of your series so like um uh underneath jaden touchstone i don't mm -hmm. know what that is comes up jaden tucson okay and so then that has 112 posts so then you can wow. see that there are people oh, who that's are awesome. and so then it's like oh i don't know but you can like then go through and like take a oh okay oh that's a fly one okay so like that's a great looking flat lay right so yeah, then wow. i would take that and i would there's like three dots in the corner and i'm totally gonna do it but like in what? the morning so there's three dots in the corner so you click the three dots in the corner and it says um there's an option to copy share url so then I would click that and then I would go over to that reposted app and open the reposted app and it would automatically set it up so that I could repost this image, which has that Vashti Harrison book that is like taken the world by storm, Little Leaders, um, a book by Whoopi Goldberg, two Black Panther books and three of my books in one oh. picture. Get That's like out. I couldn't have paid somebody to make that. That's like wow. so right, right? So then um uh yeah but the thing is like somebody actually did that like i'll look it up and i'll be like yeah. nothing 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 okay but but start to like look for variations right and like also okay. you just sort of started like posting things but so then like look up lolly look up meditation adventures like look up okay. anything that people might have said and then look up your own name like on the thing too but and 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 um and you'll you'll see if people are talking about you and if not then that just means that it's still to come but it's very possible that people are already doing it behind the scenes and you just don't know about it yet so take, cool. take a minute to do that anyway that's that's cool and also um yeah awesome. 
yeah. All right. So then there's, there's that. Um, and I hope that people, if they did get in touch with, um, um, Charnay, um, that, that they followed her rules because she's like got them on her website and they're very clear about like how to, you know, she's very clear about how she would like to be approached where, um, Tracy was just like, kind of dropped me an email for me. Um, my big, t- I love Tracy. She's amazing. Like she does like really, I, I gushed over her on the, on the interview. She's really good people. Um, yeah. in all of her like incarnations, it seems, but, um, uh, she said just to send her an email and like, you know, kind of, kind of get it started that way. But I think that podcasts are, underutilized right i think mm-hmm. that podcasts are like instagram and in that when you discover a podcast that you like you'll go or i will go back and listen to 50 100 sure. episodes of the podcast like i'll just go back yeah. to the beginning and start from the beginning and listen to them all so like being in someone's podcast is like a thing that keeps on giving mm-hmm, mm-hmm, over mm-hmm. time. So I feel like that's a, a resource that we are underutilizing. And me, I mean, I'm saying we, me too. Like I've been on Tracy's podcast because she reached out to me, not because I did the work of finding podcasts to be on. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like that's yeah. a whole different. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. that's what professional people do. <laughs> they, yeah. they, they reach yeah, out. Yeah, they so. do. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it, it brought up some stuff for me. I, I'll tell you because like see at the same time like i was do i'm doing this um this course and part of this course like we had to take all these assessments um like the myers Myers briggs assessment and the disc assessment and the strength finder so we had to take a few and the um and it was really eye-opening because when i took the disc i came up as a really high influencer which is probably no surprise to you um (laughs) but it was like <laughs> but to me, I'm like, really? I didn't know that. But but what it let me see was I'm I'm really good at taking other people's stuff and going like, you've got to read this immediately. But I'm not so good at, at like asking other influencers. You know, like I, it makes me feel a bit like how you feel at conferences to give <laughs> your business card. You know, to say you're an author. It's I feel like that. I'm like. I would feel so bad. like even now after that interview, I'm like I would feel so bad to ask Tracy to do that. <laughs> like it's, really? I swear it's crazy. So I think you know it was really useful, but I haven't worked on her one yet. Like I need to you know go off into a little corner and like deal with my own stuff because I like I said I'm as an equal influencer we could be best friends. I'd be like, what do you want to promote next week? Let's go do it. But if it comes to asking for my stuff to be promoted, I don't know what that is. Like, yeah, so there you go. That's that's where I'm at with Tracy. I loved her interview. So fantastic. I wonder if that's not a thing. You know how we're always looking, like we're, we, we do, we've done like cross promos and like, um, you know, group giveaways and, and stuff like that. But I don't think that I've been in, including in our, I'm saying little group are now giant, giant group. Um, in a place where people traded that kind of stuff, right? So mm-hmm. like, I don't, I'm not shy about talking to about other people's books either, right? Like right. that doesn't seem incorrect yeah. or inappropriate. Like, I wonder that maybe that's the next step for us to think about um, in general is thinking about how to share that kind of thing. Do those kinds of swaps, right? It's like, Mm -hmm. I'll I'll call 10 bookstores for you. I'll contact 10 podcasters for you. It's like, I'll be be your (laughs) agent for 10 10 podcasts and and vice versa, you know, whatever, or something, maybe not vice versa, but you know, um, there's something, there's something in that. Like if we Mm -hmm. can't, if there's, if it's uncomfortable to self promote, then how do we trade promote? Right. Um, yeah, true, true, true. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, like the, I mean, you've been on her podcast, so that's fantastic. Did you enjoy that? Was it like a wonderful experience, especially oh, getting interviewed by kids? 
oh my gosh, they're great because their kids are great. Yeah. They're super smart. Um, they're really earnest. Like um, they have code names so that they don't get, you know, like you know, Lou and Bean are their code names, but like, like one second in, you know, Lou's like, my real name is... Ah! I just want you, you to serious? know that before we get up. Before we, I was like, I appreciate that. Like, you don't want to be incognito. I totally get it. I mean, like, obviously I mean, that didn't end up in the show, but like, <laughs> you know, she's oh, like, I got to be honest with you. This is not my real name. <laughs> that's lovely. Love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're they're really great. They're really great, and 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 it is good. And in terms of like something like that, like I've not, I've been on podcasts that I think are way less effective, honestly, ones where it's just like collections of authors who kind of, it, it almost mimicked like a, um, like a talk show, but mm -hmm. um, where there were like maybe four or five different authors who were just only had that we were authors in common, um, okay. which I don't, I didn't find effective or useful, but I did find um, Tracy's podcast being on that one very useful because it's great to be able to talk to kids about your books. Like that yeah. part's the easy part for me. Yeah. It's ta talking to grownups about my books, that's <laughs> problematic. That's true, so then, that's um, true. That, that, you know, yeah, so that, yeah. that's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Also, like for me, I know it sounds funny to say, but because I'm like such a like open, honest person, like I, I prefer, I mean, I know it's like the social thing that everyone has to be nice and say nice things, but I, I'd kind of prefer to like approach someone who could like, like say, you know what, it's really just not our thing or it's not, you know, like it's, we didn't like it. And then I'd go, okay, thank God, rather than worry that they'd be like, yeah, yeah, it's great, <laughs> but they don't really mean it. Does that make sense? So yeah. I think that sometimes stops me because I, I think, are they going to just be nice? Because I, I don't have a problem with them thinking that it's awful, but they probably won't say it and then it'll be this kind of awkwardness. You know, no, like. but I think that there is at least, a, so I think that there's a, like, so for, for, for Tracy in particular, there might end up being an element, element of Minnesota nice, right? Where there's like a little bit of just like kindness that's put on it. But I think that she has very smartly built into her systems some some safeguards so that like mm -hmm. that doesn't happen. So um, okay. for example, like they um, wrote a blog post about Jupiter Storm, but that means mm -hmm. that Lou and Bean liked Jupiter Storm. It's right. not like their favorite book ever because okay. otherwise they would have asked me to come be on the podcast. Yeah. See how that goes? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, so gotcha, then that's gotcha. like a, you know, that's okay, like a, like okay. a, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. um, yeah. Or they maybe just wouldn't do it at all. So like, this is a thing that like, mm -hmm. um, if you're, it may be, this is totally off topic and yet not, it may be that if your people who are on your review team are not leaving reviews for your book, it is because mm -hmm. they do not want to leave you a bad review. Mm -hmm. So do not true, pester true, true. those people. That's and force point. them to leave you a bad review. So yeah. sometimes the silence is your answer. Okay. And like, you know, if you have that like set it and forget it thing where you are legitimately yeah. doing so many things that you, you're like, I sent it off. If they respond, then I will, it'll pop back up in my, you know, in my yeah. Uh, yeah. Field yeah. position, then that'll, that'll work out. So I guess the key to yeah. that really will be doing them 10 at a time though, and not like doing one and waiting. <laughs> See, That's a good point. Saying, That's a really good point. <laughs> Yeah, in fact, it was just today for once, for once, just the opposite thing happened. One of my um, rave reviewers, I accidentally left her off the list, you know, for the latest book. And she said, hey, isn't the latest book meant to be out? She said, anyways, I got, I, I didn't hear from you. So I went and bought it and, um, you know, left my review. So I'm like, what's with that? And I'm like, oh, my God, I had her that's amazing though but it's that you know like um just taking those and then like yeah that's perfect what you said about like letting the rest go and sometimes the silence lovely 
but you got to put it out there and you got to ask. That's what, yeah, you got to yeah. ask. Now, have I done any of that? No, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. However, one of my um, 2018 things that I have done a good job of is um, one of my 2018 goals was to take away two repetitive tasks off my plate. And so then um, I used to be the person who responded to bulk order requests and stuff for our books. And I am no longer the person who does mm -hmm. that. And I think that this would be a great um second thing for that to be like hey also mm -hmm. this is repetitive find people who like have followed this person or people who've liked Vashti Harrison's books or featured Vashti Harrison's books on their Instagram pages and see if they're interested in in featuring mine or some such I don't know yeah. that's a task that I could definitely um cool. get another person that's not to me do. to do so I'm adding that to the list all right Nice. Do you have other things from um, either? I, I ended up smushing Sharnae and Tracy together, even even though they really, um, the po I, I don't want us to feel like the podcasting and the Instagram are the same thing. It, Tracy does have an Instagram following, but um, uh, I, don't, I don't want us to lose the podcasting bit of that. Anything else from either of them? Uh, look, just the fact that, that, you know, there are podcasts that do that was, again, a revelation for me. I didn't actually even know that was a thing. So that's, it was, yeah, it's on my radar now, what I do with it, you know, we'll see. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, so now I have, like, the random goal. Do you know um, Matthew Winner's podcast? No. Yeah, you should look him up. He's got, like, he's, like, interviewed everybody. I so <laughs> bad want to be on Matthew Winner's podcast, except that, I'm pretty sure that probably your agent sends something to, <laughs> to Matthew Winner. And then he, I don't think it's that just that he's like, oh, Marty, you seem cool. You should be on our podcast. I don't think that's how that goes. You never <laughs> Which know. Means that lots of steps away from, from being able to do that. Anyway, there are <laughs> tons of podcasts out there um, that we could be being a part of. Um, and, and not just Matthew Winners and Tracy. So, okay. And then, um, we also, in the social media vein, talked with Pip Reed about yeah. her incredible um, use of, I'm saying incredible, but I think it's exactly the way that Pinterest is meant to be used, her mm -hmm. smart use of Pinterest. <laughs> yeah, again, again, things that never even crossed my mind, you know, like it didn't even occur to me to do the things that she that she said to do, but it was like a kind of golden moment, wasn't it? Because it was like, oh, duh. That's brilliant, brilliant. I haven't yeah. done it yet, but I have um, I have found some like free online maze creators and quiz creators and like word search creators that they're, they're out there, just look for them. Um, and it started the process, but it does feel like it's gonna, you know, a bit of like, it's gonna take a bit of time. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I we started starting the process, but, and, 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 and it started, not like it wasn't me who was gonna do it right i was like this is a great idea like you know Delicate, let's do this Delicate. right <laughs> but um like it it's kind of like my um not an existent school visit page where mm -hmm. like it's like there's a even though we have a ton of images we have workbook pages we have like many workbooks and teachers guides and and things like that um it's not exactly ready for mm -hmm. like just pinning on Pinterest. Like there's a lot to be able to maximize that. Like really we need to have it sort of hosted on our page in a way that makes sense. Like yeah. for people to be able to be picked up by the tracking pixels. Some of the things that I would be willing to give up for us to give pieces of for free on Pinterest. I don't want the whole thing to be free on the website. Not that we mm -hmm. would ever charge, but I want you to pay with an email address to be able yeah. to get all of True. these items. So then, you know, but then maybe I need yeah. to let go of some of that. Like, and, and anyway, the it's the, now stuff needs to be hammered out, but like it's, yeah. it's in queue, um, but not, yeah. not accomplished. No, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a task. Um, and then like recently I moved, um, you might have a different way you do this, but recently I moved, um, my mailing list or one of my mailing lists and I moved it to drip. So I don't know ever talks about drip. I'm going to put it out there. I'm going to plug them right now <laughs> on our podcast because everyone talks about convert kit, which I like as well. I have tried them, 
but um, I find drip to be amazing, like the things that it lets you do. And one of the things it does, which, as I said, is probably another easy way to do this, but it um, it tells me where visitors come from on my website and the exact conversions, like when that thing opened up, you know, like whether they clicked it, closed it, you know, like the whole the whole bit. And it's it's been fantastic to have data like that. Um, so I look forward to once I've set, you know, the Pinterest stuff up, seeing, you know, what these people do when they come to the website, you know, like which pages they got, do they just take the download and run? Yeah. You know, while they're downloading, does my little, you know, pop-up box come up? Do they sign up anyway? <laughs> you know, all that sort of stuff. So, um, so yeah. But it will be yeah. curious to see that, you know, does it also convert to, to something more than they just take the the freebie and like they've got an activity for their child yeah. that afternoon, you know? Yeah. Um, so one of the things on our to do list um, f for being able to like launch that with like, not maybe not maximum effect, but like enough mm -hmm. like usefulness in the beginning is um, writing um, an onboarding sequence targeted at people who would have just come and taken a free material. It's yeah. like, you gotta figure out like what kind of, so like all of our free materials, none of, so like Pip's free materials are like super useful in general, right? So like if you're at all connected with the Bible and have kids, which is a lot of people, mm -hmm. then her principles are, are very useful and that's part of her mission. So then that works for her for it to be like, cause just having people download it is her fulfilling her mission. So then that's yeah. great. But then for us, like our materials are not just generally useful except for the things that we have about the scientific method. Um, but um, everything else is very much tied to the stories. So then the question is like, what frame of mind is the person in who's downloading which thing um, mm -hmm. and writing um, an email like sequence for them that if you can pick them up in a, a, a track with a tracking pixel from that page on the site um, yeah. and then follow them onto their social media, which you could follow them onto Instagram or Facebook with that tracking pixel mm -hmm. um, and then try to get them, like what would you offer them to get them right. to come back and come join back. their <laughs> email and then yeah. softly, slowly start to be friends with them. <laughs> so that yep, it's yep, a yep. lot, like I really, you know, it's a lot to kind of think through, but it, it has a ton of potential. And yeah. again, it's the kind of thing that once you do it, like Pinterest is just out there, like, like Instagram, yeah. like, like podcasts, like, um, it's out there working for you once you've yeah. gotten the thing set up. So, yeah, <sighs> so much to do. I know, but we've made good progress. We haven't interviewed any authors, which is interesting. Like, no, I mean, they are authors, some of them, but I mean, we didn't interview them as authors. So, um, yeah, we'll see what we come up in our next, uh, bunch of, of seven, interviews in our next workshop and goal setting um but i think it was really useful a lot of people that we talked to really useful yeah we learned hey for me for me too all right um so are there any things that um you want uh like us to hold you accountable for for the next time we have <laughs> this workshop and goal setting <laughs> Okay, yeah. I will have found my goals sheet. <laughs> okay, that's a good one. Yeah, right. and um, I'm sure I've unconsciously done them anyway. I've all started to do them. I have reached, I do remember I said I was going to reach out to some schools, so I've started that process. I was going to do a market, I think, and I started that process. So, like, yeah, there's a few things I've, I've been doing, but I want to find the sheet so you can all hold me accountable in my next uh, goal workshop thing I will be like here's my goals and there's a few ticks on them um yeah, yeah I think that's and maybe call some like reach out to some people be brave enough to say hello yeah I have some books you might like yeah so <laughs> I'm definitely not going to be that kind of brave but I would <laughs> I, I would like to make sure that someone <laughs> reaches out on my <laughs> <behalf>. <laughs> that's cheating <laughs> 
<laughs> it's using your resources. Is that is it, is it cheating to use a hammer to get a nail into the wall? I don't know. I don't think so. That's a that's an available tool. So um so for someone to reach out on my behalf and those things, and um also uh the whole thing with um uh the whole thing with either I need to I need to get up the the school visit page all the way or we need to have delved into the Pinterest. Yeah. Like so one or the other. Okay. Um for the next okay. time. Okay. All right. Very cool. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Thank you. We're done. You can find us once again just in case you've forgotten at www.indiekidlet podcast.com and um, you can look us up individually to follow us on instagram we wouldn't mind would we oh yeah no no i yeah. wouldn't mind that that's not going to mess up any algorithms so i am um mom teacher writer on instagram fabulous and i am eleanor page books and uh, we'll see you there reach out and say hello Absolutely. And um, a couple of people emailed us with their goals. And if you would like to email us with your goals and want to be um, accountability partners, um, uh, and maybe Helena should email us with her goals too. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Good point. You could, you could send that email to <laughs> the Indie Kidlet podcast at gmail.com because of course they don't match <laughs> <laughs> perfect <laughs> wonderful thank you